Smart Interactive Tape, a popular resource in early years education for the young learners. This resource can come to a complete halt if it develops this warning. CMOS checks of error. In this video, we are going to have a look at the reason of this error and how to resolve it so we can get this unit up and running again. So let's go and get this sorted. Smart Interactive Table 442i Smart Collaborative Learning Center combines learning and play to inspire center-based learning and active collaboration. This is a common resource in many primary schools in the UK. It is an excellent resource that can allow up to 8 learners to collaborate on lessons at the same time. It features a 42-inch LCD 1080p display and weighs around 160 pounds or 70 kg. It comes with tons of ready-made activity packs free to download from the Smart Exchange website. Now that's all well and good if the unit is working. This particular one have this checksum error. Now we're going to show how how is it effective? So when you turn the unit on, uh, it will boot up. And as soon as it boots, it gives you this checksum error message. And the only option that's available here is F1 to skip and F2 to enter setup. So when you enter setup, thinking that you can probably just change the date on it and reset the date, save that setting and hoping that once the unit restarts, it should start working. So when you save this configuration, in this particular case, it will just turn the unit off. So you have to switch that unit on again. And when you do, the boot message starts and you see the same error message again. So it's like a loop, it does the same thing over and over again. Basically a conflict between CMOS and BIOS. When you shut down your PC, the CMOS records a number that must match another one that is generated by BIOS when you start your computer again. If the two values are the same, we have a happy boot. However, if the values are different, if the one generated by CMOS and the one that is generated by BIOS, the two don't match up, then you see this error, which is a CMOS checksum error. Now these values are held in the computer in a very simple CR2032 button shaped batteries. That's the one which holds these batteries in these. That's the one which holds these values. And you see them often on the motherboard in PC as well as in the laptops. So these batteries are present in both motherboards. Now this unit is also suffering from the same problem. All it needs is to have a new CMOS battery in this unit. But fortunately we don't have to get to the motherboard in order to change this battery. It is nicely placed in a small unit which is covered by this latch. So when you undo this latch, here is the unit and that unit needs to come off. It is connected by this power connector which you need to turn off and take this cover off and there is also a, a 
network cable which you need to plug out and after that the unit will be fully exposed but now you need to undo these two screws one on each end so unscrewing this will release the unit and the unit can come out this unit is connected to the rest of the table by this connector in the front there in order to get to the battery you have to get rid of these five screws so when you undo these five screws it will expose the circuit and here is that battery now in order to get to this battery you may have to use a screwdriver because at this point you need to latch something across there so that there is a bit more of a room and be careful taking this battery out as you can easily damage the circuitry there so take the battery out and just replace it with a new CR2032 battery put the unit back in that patch again and make sure that you connect all those connectors after all this is done you can switch this unit on again and this is expected that the first time when you switch the unit on it's going to give you this checksum error now when you go press F2 and go into setup you can now change this date date and time need to be changed here save that setting and the unit will turn off again you may have to restart that unit and when it restarts the boot process starts and now we have a different screen now it is ready to boot so you can start and it is now going to boot into windows now at this point the unit is back in action it is working again and now all those updates so I'm going to do some updates on it now connect it to the internet go online update it all but now you, the unit is ready to be used again it may require some of the windows updates some new resources from the website uh, from smart website and you can update it and now the unit is good to go